Thank you so much for listening to Urbanistica podcast. I am Mustafa Sharif, an urban planner, and you're more than welcome to join my big journey of exploring the making of smarter and more livable cities. Please don't forget to follow Urbanistica on the different social media platforms and also let's connect on LinkedIn. Big thanks to Urbanistica podcast partner, AFRI. AFRI is an international engineering and design company providing sustainable solutions in the fields of energy, industry, and infrastructure. Are you ready for a new episode? Let's go for it. I have the pleasure to welcome you to Urban Stika Podcast. Hello and welcome. Hey, thank you, Mustafa. Uh, I have the honor to be here, so and to talk to you, very approachable person, and lovely to talk to. Um, yeah, so uh, let's start it. Yeah, yeah. Happy to have you here. How are you doing? Uh, I'm good. Oh, it's good weather today. Yeah. <laughs> finally, finally. Yeah. Uh, so enjoying uh, enjoying the last day in, uh, in Stockholm before heading back to the Netherlands and yeah. uh, hopefully coming back soon. Here, <laughs> so we will see about that. Yeah. How do you find the weather here? It's like similar to Netherlands or? Um. Well, so it's colder here, obviously. Yeah. And you have a lot of snow. Uh, we do have snow occasionally, mm. like maybe in because couple of years yeah. so it's not uh, every year a uh, theme um, but yeah we have a lot of rain and a lot of wind mm. so uh, in that sense I like the summer here better of than course, the Netherlands yeah. so. <laughs> so welcome uh, welcome Thank to Stockholm so, so uh, let's start with you how would you like to introduce yourself to our listeners okay so I would like to introduce myself as a passionate architectural designer um, I am. Um, I'm re- I just recently finished my master uh, degree at TU Delft, and before that, I have a huge story I, th- I will tell you about later. But in general, I was born in uh, Iraq, Baghdad, and in very nice neighborhood in Al Qadisiya, a very green uh, area, a very calm and quiet, and quiet uh, academic traditional family, mm. and. A family that pushed us further and further, <laughs> luckily. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's basically the background. Yeah. Um, I remember. Um, I think that Baghdad and Iraq have uh, definitely touched my soul in kind of way. Mm. Um, this calmness uh, of Al Qadisiya, I, I, it's something that I still seek till this day, and uh, I love to be in a calm area. But on the other hand. Like living in a really busy city as Baghdad, also, yeah. it's also something mm-hmm. really cool. Mm-hmm. Like I, especially yeah. in uh, you know in the more, most urban areas of the city. So yeah. I like that also. Um, yeah, as a childhood, I was quite a calm kid. I would say <laughs> uh, not that much. No, <laughs> I don't think we are all calm. But anyway, um, I grew up uh, with. Um, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents. Yeah. And um, I remember waking up very early in the morning um, to exercise with my grandfather just before he head to Baghdad University where he used mm. to tutor. Um, and then after that, I would spend some time with my grandmother before I go to the nursery <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, coming back. And just like that, I grew up um, in kind of also like a creative family. Mm. They pushed us to do some creative stuff, building Legos, uh, playing with clay, mm. with mud. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I, I remember also my mother very worried about, hey, you won't be finishing your homework. And my grandmother was like, mm-hmm. no, she knows everything. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's basically like a, cool. a quite traditional academic yeah. family yeah. where I grew up. Yes. But what happened? So you, because uh, you studied in the Netherlands. Yes. You moved there as well or no? It's just for a study. Well, uh, the story goes it's like after the war in 2003, um, the situation in Baghdad was quite dangerous, let's say, yeah. for families in general. And um, my family decided to leave Iraq in 2005, in the early of uh, January that year. And we headed to Jordan, Amman, uh, also quite a nice uh, city and land. 
and we lived there for approximately two years where mm. I started to finish my uh, secondary school. But uh, after that, my family decided to move again to Morocco, Casablanca, a total different type of city. Mm. And we stayed there for one and a half year and before we were, uh, inv- we were invited by the UN to move into the Netherlands. Yeah. And there I managed to finish my secondary school finally. And I, I was like trying to find out the path of mm. where, where I, how to finish this you know, the, the, the journey of education. Mm. And um, I found myself very attached to technical stuff, but also artistic stuff. Um, I had a quiet, um, traditional, uh, technical profile during the secondary school. And with, of course, an extra uh, uh, lesson, which was art. Mm. And I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed making models and playing with materials, baking clay, etc. cetera. Nice. So actually yeah. this, um, you know, the inner child that I used to have in Baghdad <laughs> was still present. Yeah. Somehow. And um, yeah, so after all, I decided to join um, Bindisham University for Applied Sciences. Um, and yeah, that's that's basically the start of my journey into the architecture world. Cool. And uh, you're doing your master thesis. Yes. Uh, you told me about this and uh, I find it like really interesting. And yes. I would love that we explore more with our listener as well. Sure. So uh, tell me about the the background, because like your thesis has the name, uh, the memory of the invisible city. Yes. Interesting. So tell me about like uh, the, the research studio and, and why just this topic and what is this about? Um, so just to give you a background about how it all started. So after I finished my bachelor's, I started to work for Rainbout for approximately three years. And after that, I decided to finish my master's. Uh, or to start my master's in general, um, I had the necessity to to learn more and to uh, strengthen my position um, in in the architectural world. Uh, and thus, uh, I started my master at the TU Delft. And um, after that, I joined. Well, actually, my first graduate, my first project uh, in TU Delft was also in the same uh, graduation studio that I did. So the Borders and Territory Group. And um, I found it very interesting since it handles the problem of cities that are on border um, and have this problem of borders condition uh, and contemporary borders and politics, etc. Mm. And since of my background and the political situation that I have uh, lived in, um, I found that also very interesting to, to be involved in. Yeah. Uh, my graduation thesis is mostly about the invisible city, and by that I refer to the underground city. So, okay. you know, you see um, the cities all all around the world. They stand. You know, you you have a new mention, for example, Stockholm or Amsterdam or Baghdad. You you directly build an image, but you don't know what is underneath this mm. image that you know keep this city city still functioning. Yeah. You, you you see what is on the ground, like at your eye level. Exactly. But what is hidden under the ground is something not to be preserved yeah. or seen. And I found that a very interesting topic to handle. And therefore, um, during my graduation studio, I focused on the underground city of Trieste. Mm. Which country? It, uh, so, it, Trieste is located in Italy mm-hmm. and it's a port city. Uh, originally a Roman city that is um, due during a lot of wars and conflict have assigned itself to be part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire Mm. uh, until the First World War when uh, it was uh, annexed by uh, Italy. So it was, it became a part of Italy. Okay. And uh, you still see this conflict on streets. Uh, in the term of architecture, type of architecture, people, behavior, uh, the urban fabric, etc. It's very interesting location. How, 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 how is it like, uh, you mentioned architecture and people. Uh, let's uh, talk about the architecture. How do you see the conflict? Well, um, you see definitely a different type of architecture. Ah. So you have the inner city mm-hmm. um, where it was developed during the reign of Maria Theresa of Hungary and of Austria as well. 
and um, it was like the what they did basically is like they took the whole uh, area and layer a new um, a new layer on top with an you know a very typical um, Austro-Hungarian architecture. So mm. you see you know the grid and the lines and uh, very specific uh, length and width of a blocks. So okay. it's um, it's very interesting and. Um, well, after the First World War, of course, when it became part of Italy, there became a new new phase of uh, Italianization, as mm. they call it, since okay. it was the start of the f- fascism and uh, the fascist uh, movement and all of that. Mm. And they were trying, you know, to, um, to remove these marks of the city identity by adding new type of architecture. So you, see, you would see in the city also like the new classical, and how do you call it, the new... Um, Neoclassicism architecture mm. uh, and on the ground, while a lot of part of several parts outside of the inner cities so of the city center are still having the same character of, um, you know, the old uh, uh, houses. Yeah. They are they are you know uh, settled around uh, the hills and such. So it's very organic shaped. Yeah, area. does it look beautiful together? The mix between two different um, styles, or no? It's like a kind of uh, chaotic. <laughs> Well, um, how do you experience it? Well, I, I like that. I like to have a contrast uh, into the city. I like to see different type of uh, mm. of areas. But definitely, what what you see, and I feel like there is some, uh, yeah, neglectness of how uh, you know, how the different parts of the cities are handled. Yeah, uh, are they are you know how uh, the city lighting is positioned in one place and the mm. other and the, uh, maybe the other part is more clean, you know? So there is... But wait, so, so the city like uh, is divided between the two countries or it's on the one side of the country? No, so um, now it's belong- it belongs definitely to Italy. So okay. it's a part of Italy. So it's inside the border of Italy. Let's it say. is, okay. but it is surrounded totally by Slovenia, Croatia, and etc. Okay. So it is, yeah, it, it's just very... Um, when you see it uh, um, and you look at the geographical uh, nature, natural border, mm. you would you would probably say, okay, this won't be belong to Italy somehow. But just because <laughs> of you know, yeah. uh, the city because it was a port city, a lot of immigrants from all over the mm. world lived in the city. Okay. So um, and also a lot of Italian have worked there. So when yeah. it became part of Italy, mm. of course there was you know this is still uh, a tension that you know people from slovenian okay. uh, origin that they were you know mm. well, uh, kind have, of you, have you been there i guess right yes i have been there twice yeah. and do I, you do you also like see within the city there are these towns or communities like say you know sometimes you go big cities you see like chinatown or uh, like yeah. a community from, from yeah. people from middle east or so on yeah uh, d- did you also see this uh well um from my experience yes i have experienced uh, like uh, some settlements of mm. uh, only Sl- Slovenian origin people, okay. etc. But in the city center, you see, you yeah, know, just like a, any more, um, type of uh, city, you see mm. like more mixed uh, type of people and also architecture. Yeah. So um, in that sense, yes, there is. And I feel um, sometimes you don't, I mean, so all, all countries want to look really, you know, good and cool about but when you are there you f- you feel sometimes that the people have some differences in among them uh, you see that restaurants serve different type of cuisines mm. um, you see people they don't, they don't talk about several subjects just because they are sensitive to the other ones and like, uh-huh, okay so they respect each other and in that sense yes mm. or at least what i have uh, experienced <laughs> experience, it's, it's a, definitely a, a respectful relationship between people architecture and the city okay, definitely cool. Um, but yeah, this is but this is also like an, an subjective um, opinion. Of course, yeah. And uh, you're a world yeah. storyteller, so we see the world from your eye. Yes, yes. In this are... episode, yeah. so this is what you saw on the ground. Yes. And your research question is about. Yeah. So my re- research question was about how uh, could an abandoned air raid shelter transform uh, the our collective memory about the underground. Okay. Um, so as I mentioned, I mainly studied the underground of the city of Trieste. I was really interested in the infrastructure that is built there and the culture that surrounds the subterranean uh, architecture there. So it is something that um, started 
from early years, you know, using the caves and the karst plateau, etc. Mm. And um, it grew up with the city. So you would see like buildings from the Roman, uh, uh, you know, the, the from the Roman era okay. in the city. Uh, there is uh, some part of aqueducts uh, that also become hidden inside, you know, uh, the places. But you also see uh, some prison underneath uh, churches or underneath mm -hmm. castles, wow. under the ground. And um, I found it also interesting because I talked to local people from there and they were mentioning like we, we like all the old houses would have a cellar. And so, interesting. yes, they, they live under the ground. They have this relationship with the underground. And what happened in just before the Second World War, when uh, Trieste, as other Italian city, was preparing to the war, mm -hmm. um, they have managed to build a lot of infrastructure and air raid shelters under the ground. Okay. And um, what happened after these, um, you know, what what happened after the war? These spaces were totally neglected. Um, of course, there are like two or three tunnels that are used now for infrastructure because they were built as an infrastructure also. element, but then used as an air raid. You shelter. mean like a logistical? Yeah, just like yeah. streets, like uh, yeah. uh, car tunnels. And, uh, but the other parts are like totally closed and, and neglected and uh, the municipality doesn't really put a light on it, doesn't highlight it, doesn't want to do anything with it. Are there many? Like, how many mm -hmm. are we talking about? Like one, two or no, like 10 or plus? No, no, we are talking like about um, at least what I have managed to um, survey in the area mm -hmm. was approximately around uh, 30. 30? Yes. But it's so a, many. It, it's quite a small city. So if you see like how, you know, everything is so, so much connected with each other. Yeah. But when you, when you walk, do you see like an entrance for them or no, you don't see them at all? Uh, well, there are entrances, uh, interests, but the, the interest, uh, what is like for me also interest and something that I have highlighted in, uh, in my thesis is the fact that such an entrance uh, like melt in the city facade. You don't see it. Wow. It's just a door. So cool. You know? Yeah, and just as in any normal door, but it's so totally hidden. So you would probably miss a lot. I myself have missed my <laughs> location several times. <laughs> so, 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 so in this city, you have like a, let's say a, a normal city on the ground, but yeah. under the ground, there's like another kind of city with in, uh, tunnels connected to each other or yeah. maybe disconnected. Yeah. But uh, the idea was to connect several of them to use it also as like in uh, pedestrian routes and infrastructures, mm. etc. Uh, but that never happened. And T tell me, how did how did you like explore? Like, what method you use when you went there and uh, talk to people? And is there a map of of these tunnels or shelters? Um. Well. Um. Yeah. How if there is a map? <laughs> no, not really. There is no actual like official map. Mm -hmm. Um. At least my location, it's on map, but it's not well uh, navigated. So my method was to dive into uh, archives and books. Uh, wow. from, yeah, it was a, it was really nice journey, and I think if I look now back again and dive, like take maybe a week or or more to stay <laughs> in Trieste again, I would even find out more uh, more tunnels. tunnels. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So you talk to people sure. and ask them like, yes. uh, show me yeah. the entrance, or how, what did you talk? Well, um, I was lucky to uh, first of all to have someone from the locals, okay, um, uh, who was also uh, who guide us through guide me through the tunnels yeah. and also several members who were very interesting from like my group who very, were very interesting in seeing uh, the underground tunnels of yeah. course um but yeah so basically i uh, my method was okay to navigate everything to survey it and to see where it's possible to visit okay and so i paid a visit to uh the so-called kleine berlin uh, tunnels uh, it's an, an complex of several tunnel, tunnels connected to each other that I will come back uh, yeah. for it later to explain more about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my method was first to photograph the, you know, to photograph what is under the ground since it's not visible mm -hmm. from the eye. You don't know anything <laughs> about it. It's there, but it's not there. Yeah. And um, after that, um, after doing my own studies, I like, like doing uh, the architectural research, etc. I... I went back to to the location uh, alone, okay. <laughs> and I managed to stay uh, for a couple of hours under the ground uh, and visit every single part to map it also and to draw it because not everything is put on uh, paper. Okay. Oh, wow. Um. Yeah, that was really interesting. Could, could you could you <clears throat> capture 
when you made the picture? Could you capture like exactly what's there or the camera did it, but it didn't? Well, that's something that, um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, there is some part, but there is the, the limitation when yeah. the darkness comes to, uh, you know, take, which take uh, its role and present itself, of yeah. course, which is something very beautiful. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so I even this process was quite segmented. <laughs> you know, you you have a light and you uh, photograph yeah. a part and you walk further and mm. and then you try to uh, put it together in your head, but also on paper, etc. So yeah. that's um, so, so. So if I understand you correctly, what you want to do is that to make this invisible shelter tunnels more vis- visible somehow, and maybe people take people take part of it in during their daily life. Um, well, I uh, it's not like exactly make it visible because I believe like taking the underground and make it visible, it would lose its own yeah, quality. Yeah, then it's not really. <laughs> yeah, right. But what I wanted to highlight is the quality of the underground. Okay. Um, I mean, as a human, we uh, all had our ancestors who lived in caves who... Uh, you know, the underground was always seen as a shelter, as a, some some place yeah. safe and warm. And, yeah. you know, the, the nature basically holds you. And now, like nowadays, or after, let's say, after the Industrial uh, Revolution, the, the whole story shifted. Mm. Since, you know, the, the surface of the ground was more valuable, we started to make buildings, uh, large buildings and malls and, mm. and you know, uh, public spaces. But we forgot about or not forgot, we assigned another function to the underground. Yeah, because like it's not needed anymore. I, I remember my, my grandparents, they had also like this kind of underground room Yeah. Uh, to store like the food because it's very cold. Uh, to store the food or to be there when it's summer, you know, on the ground. So we just go underground and it's very cold. Yeah. Um, as you mentioned, like then we have buildings, we have more machines. So there is not like necessary function of this underground. Well, um, so, so what is like if we look at the function, what is assigned for the underground mm. is now basically like infrastructure of, uh, you know, tunnels, uh, of sewage. sewage, of electricity, water supplies, etc. Things we don't um, want to see. Exactly, and that's changed our perception about mm. the underground. We mm. start to see it as something dark, cold, filthy, dirty, maybe. Dirty, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, right. <laughs> Um, and pu- yeah, so the perception in general has changed. Yeah, why it changed, and I think we can shift that. Mm. I can. I, I mean, if I can see the qualities of the underground, why don't you see it? Or maybe just to highlight it, just to accept the fact that there is an, an upper layer with its own quality, of course, and there is an underground with its own quality. Mm. And to make you know, I think this relationship. If we create a kind of um, balanced relationship mm. between above the ground and under the ground. I think we can manage to have so much more, you know, qualities that we can play with in, in terms yeah. of architecture and urban design. Mm. Interesting. Sure. Then uh, when I was reading your thesis, you mentioned uh, the individual um, memory or narrative yes. and the, the... The collective memory. Yeah. Can you tell yes. us? So um, as, I, as I mentioned, like uh, since our perception has changed about the underground, there is also a type of memory that we build, mm. uh, you know, and uh, just to um, a, a memory is something like it's quite abstract. Eh? You, you 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 have an experience, you you store it up in your mind, and uh, when you are in the same situation, or maybe you want to recall the memory, then it comes back. Yeah, but that's uh, you, we definitely need to separate then uh, what is an individual memory and what is a collective memory. So an individual memory is something that is based on your personal experience. Mm. While a collective memory is something that, um, a memory that you can recall based on um, collective knowledge. So you might not have been living or seeing something, Mm -hmm. but you recall uh, something about it. So now, I I don't know if you have been under the ground. Have you been under the ground? Yeah, yeah, like in different type of places under the ground. Sure. But then there are some people who uh, then associate, you know, our uh, association with the underground. A lot of people would say it's dark, it's filthy, and, you know, what we just have mentioned. But they never have experienced it. So they recall this memory based on the knowledge that they have heard or yeah, experienced like, or from culture. Yeah, so in the movie. Or, or, exactly. Or, so uh, we have also our background and cultures that yeah. keep affecting us yeah. over and over again. 
Um, and so that is the difference. And um, I believe what happened in the case of then the underground uh, spaces in, in Trieste is that that uh, the people have re or they have a collective memory about mm -hmm. you know about them since they are war structure yeah. they are under the ground a lot of slavery happened a mm -hmm. lot of people mm -hmm. died while uh, digging up the okay. ground and th then you know this place is still have a kind of a stigma you know mm -hmm. so the people bad in memory. the yeah exactly it has a bad memory while you know maybe just by not looking at the history just looking at the architectural facts of yeah, such an yeah. underground space you probably would recognize some qualities that you can incorporate in mm. type of architecture you know so that was that was my main concern about the Kleine Berlin uh, situation or in general the underground in, in Trieste that is um it, it was so stigmatized uh, people would people and government don't want to do anything yeah. with it and then I think, okay, but how about the qualities of this space instead? Mm -hmm. You know, instead of looking through the eye of the history, can we look through the eye of architecture and decide? Interesting. And decide what is what yeah. are the qualities and how to incorporate them further. Mm. So yeah, that is basically uh, what is uh, the collective and individual memory. And there are de definitely a lot of people who have talked about this, mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. how uh, you know. Um, like for example, Pierre Nora had mentioned that maybe a monument could be also a, something of the That's collective true. memory. That's true. But there is another type of an architectural memory mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you know, for in, in the case of architectural memory, you, you really need to focus on the location as the context of mm -hmm. of it. It's really important. Yeah. And also, like for example, um, Aldo Rossi had also mentioned the collective memory as part of the city artifacts, urban ar artifacts. Um, so if the building doesn't have a memory, if you know, it's, it's still true. It, it needs so it needs some mm. kind of identity and history and memory to be to become a part of this collective memory. Yeah. And sometimes these artifacts remove from the place, but you still see people recalling them. Mm. And you know, so there is a permanence of, yeah, yeah. of this architecture mm. of this memory. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so, but in the case then in Trieste, one might wonder, okay, what is, what is left then if you, uh, you still keep uh, seeing these spaces from the perspective of, uh, of history of war and such, what is left for the architecture? And my idea was to create then a counter memory. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean, just to create something contrast, something that different, just a different memory to experience the uh, the architectural qualities without looking at the history. Uh -huh. Okay, so you want to change people um, or shift people's minds about these underground shelters? I think I want them to have um, an, to have a, one more memory, you know, <laughs> of yeah, that place. Yeah. Um, I find it also difficult to say, guys, listen, forget about everything past. This is also you cannot do that as well. I like, can, like, but I think it's part of them. Yeah, exactly. But I think it when you say, uh, okay, this there is a different type of experience in this mm. place, then you build uh, something beside the existing memory that can, they can, yeah. you know, that can help you to still experience the mm. qualities of the underground. What, why, why the city didn't do anything? Because the mm, the city. I mean, as I mentioned, the city has still a uh, political tension between different parties that belong mm. to different people. So yeah. you have um, different political point of views, mm. uh, but also this specific location that I'm talking about, uh, the Kleine Berlin, um, it has really bad stigma. Wait, so you, you say Berlin? Yeah, Kleine Berlin. So the, the name comes from, um, you know, after the uh, the fascist regime in Italy has fallen down, um, the Germans have took part um, of several parts of Italy, mm. um, including Trieste, since it was a port city, they needed it yeah. still for export import. And um, so they basically located their uh, army in this area okay. and they forbid uh, any Italian person to enter the space. Mm. Families were deported. Okay. And they took the, over their houses. So it was basically, it became, you know, this part of the city, which was, you know, um, a bit of the port and the train station, like a mm. really lively uh, public area became really a military base mm. um, for their um, operations. 
And so people in Italy started to call it Kleine Berlin and Klein uh, uh, in, da- in um, Germans mean small. So they refer- it's <laughs> like a small Berlin. Ah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so interesting. And it still have, um, after after all, like the, the area have lost this name, the Kleine Berlin. But, but the, still. But the um, underground area Chetel still have this name. Yeah, yeah. Even though that not all of it belongs to uh, to the Germans, so mm. to the, when the German arrived, they built um, uh, this complex of uh, of air raid shelters. Besides the original mm. um, air, raid, air raid shelter that was built by the municipality, and then the uh, radio and television station have built one next to it, and they become connected to yeah. each other. And the last one was added by uh, the train uh, company to uh, you know to create a safe place for their um, employees but anyway um after all when you look at this place it wasn't you know um i understand that okay the germans have built part of it and you might not want to recall it yeah um or maybe remove it from um from the memory since mm. you don't want to uh, to yeah, to give it a glory. In yeah, that of course. Sense. I mean, I mean, we were let's say we were suffering at what one place. Why do we highlight it again? Just and and show. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, it's fine that we show this place. They did like a lot of bad things there. Yeah. But um, maybe we need to recreate or just remove it uh, because we don't want to suffer more. Yeah. No. That definitely. I understand that. On the other hand, you um, you should also re- keep in mind that. Actually, not the German have built this place. The, the, the people who have really created these walls and these stones and we mm. have the digging process, they were basically slaves brought from other towns surrounding the area and brought to this location. And we don't know what happened to them after that. Mm. There is no really a document or anything to mention, okay, these people, we use them to build this, but where are they? Mm. And I feel, you know... This is this is probably the last thing that these slaves have done. You don't know what is, you know, yeah. you don't know what what happened to them afterwards. Mm-hmm. And I feel by removing it, it's a bit disrespectful to the people who were enslaved to build it mm. somehow. Okay. And therefore, I, I understand there is, you know, this tension. Now, uh, mm. also like thinking about it. Okay, it's, it belongs to the German, but how? And mm. So, but I think by just only focusing on the architectural qualities of this place and the urban um, the urban design um, qualities that this place has, yeah. I think we can, you know, we can still pay, pay a, a respect to these people mm. while not, uh, you know, giving the glory back to the Germans yeah. say, in that sense. So, or the, the yeah. Nazis too, yeah. to, so make, to be more specific. Exactly. So your idea is that let's stop fighting, <laughs> political fighting yeah, and so on. Definitely. <laughs> and uh, let's focus uh, or take opportunity of this place and create something uh, Exactly. For That's... people living now. So yeah, like we have a city and then we have underground yes. that also could be Definitely. usable. Definitely. And so my... To uh... try to create peace uh, with architecture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some, somehow, yeah. I think, I think so. That was my aim from the start. <laughs> no, but to be honest with you, I still uh, like visiting the place two times. I I saw this tension around the place. Mm. So um, even my, uh, you know, the guy, uh, the local guy, um, uh, Maurizio, who t- who took me like in the, inside the tunnels and outside, we were trying to navigate where you know where the pipes go up and mm. ventilation and everything. Um, he couldn't mention the name of Kleine Berlin. There is so much stigma around it. Okay. People people don't talk really about it, mm. and um, so a lot of uh, interest uh, the entrances uh, are blocked. Mm. Um, there is nothing like. Oh, also on like the surface the, the, the top that um, happened to be located above it there is nothing happening so there is no renovation there is so it's a kind of weird and I think the, because there is so much stigma around mm. it you mm. know it, I think it's time to make you know to, to, to change to, this to change this to mm. say okay guys uh, let's think about you know the architectural qualities that this uh, location yeah. has to provide us Mm. And um, so my idea was, since also the city is heavily light polluted, um, light polluted, yeah, okay. he- very very much. Is which it, cost- how big is the city? Like how many people are there? Is it like? Um, well, it's a quite big. City. I mean, it's a poor city, so you have waves of yeah. of immigrants, of uh, you know, um, uh, 
immigrant workers they came, they've come so it's not really a, a stable uh let's say um but yeah it's if if we compare it let's say to milan it's quite quite a still small city like okay, you can yeah. um a small port city but it gained its uh, popularity because it became the only port for vienna mm. back then oh wow you know yeah uh, when it was under the uh, Austro-Hungarian um, Empire, yeah. for sure. Um, but yeah, just to be back at the story of um, of the light pollution and how it all happened. So uh, when I visited there, uh, I visited Trieste, um, I was like really in shock about this, uh, you know, it was kind of, it felt like a daylight during day. Really? Yeah. During night? You yeah, mean? Dude, I mean, yeah, sorry, during night. Really? Yeah, it was like, especially the, uh, the city center, it's really like, there is a lot of light and I think because it's also uh, facing the port, maybe mm -hmm. that's for more safety. But in that sense, I was like, okay, what's happening there? And when I had done my research, I found out that a lot of um, astronomical uh, observatories were closed just because of, you know. The light pollution. Because of the light pollution. So do you see like clearly like this light cloud or? You definitely, you don't. Um, uh, I didn't see any star. Uh, really? I, not None. And um, you see, like, it feels like, you know, when, uh, you know, when in Iraq, when you have a lot of dust in the air. Yeah. yeah? You can see it. <laughs> so you, it's like a cloudy, but, dusty. Yeah. But is it coming from building uh, advertising uh, boards or what is the. It's, it's mainly the urban uh, lighting. So uh, the lights on the streets and, uh, but also around the buildings and such. Interesting. For sure. Yeah. And um, so I thought about, okay, what does, you know, this underground have to offer us? What, what is the quality? So, you know, there is the quality of, uh, of the warmth, of the safety, mm -hmm. um, uh, but also the, the quality of the darkness. And this is like quite weird so, since <laughs> our all perception say when you, when you mention darkness, you know, people say it's bad. It's scary. Yeah, it's yeah. scary. Yeah. And you don't know, uh, you don't know a lot about it, and you don't want to be in the dark place. And yeah, because like we don't see what's in the front of us. Maybe like a leon will eat exactly. us. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but if you, um, our ancestors could live with darkness, and mm. you would say, okay, how uh, that happened? And that's just because the fact when you spend a lot of time in the darkness, yeah. um, your um, vision shifts. Yeah, you, so become, you, still, you become a friend for yeah. the darkness. No, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but literally, your uh, your your visual uh, mechanism shift to mm -hmm. uh, to preserve more the edges. Um, the you know you you don't see color anymore, but you focus more on the shapes, etc. And um, your the the senses would support the visual mm -hmm. um, uh, mechanism just to um, provide with more uh, information, so you would feel. Um, you would quickly uh, recognize the temperature difference. You would, your smell would probably be a lot better, yeah. and uh, even the touch and senses mm -hmm. and everything. So, um, and by that, you know, everything becomes supportive to the visual um, yeah. uh, experience, and you build this this knowledge. So, I think if you spend enough time under the ground, you start to recognize, okay, your, the qualities, uh, the qualities yeah, of, yeah. exactly. So your senses would start also to support this experience mm. and you would have much more pleasure, pleasurable, uh, yeah. Oh, tell experience. me, how, how was your first time going to, to the tunnel, like inside the tunnel? Like okay. explain it. So the first time we went, um, I went with a group of, uh, of, uh, of girls and so my colleagues because I was scared. <laughs> <laughs> we were kind of, we were quite happy. And uh, I you think were scared we, because we were scared. of your uh, individual memory or collective memory? Mm -mm. I think I was scared because of my collective memory. Mm. You know, because, but I also, I, personally, I didn't like darkness at all. I, as a person, yeah. you know, especially like I can recall these uh, dark nights in Baghdad when there were, you know, yeah. no electricity and all these yeah. things. I hate it, this. It, it, yeah. it brings yeah. back memory for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. And so um, I went there with uh, three of my colleagues and, um, um, well, we had the, the we were lucky that we, we would visit on uh, on the day that w the tunnels were open. So it's open once a, a month, the last of Friday of each month, and for several hours, like not that much. But open for what? <clears throat> for visitors. Okay. Uh -huh. And it's done all by voluntary people since the, hmm. the municipality doesn't want anything <laughs> to do with it. And that's also where I met uh, Maurizio, so the guy who guided me through the tunnels yeah. several times. 
And uh, so he basically, he was ch- telling us about the story. So we were together, you know, four girls speaking English, etc. This was and on the ground? No, no, it was under the ground. So okay, we so, entered... so tell me how you enter, how was the experience? Okay, so the experience was definitely a bit scary. <laughs> In the beginning, since the entrances were quite narrow, uh, it was uh-huh. done like this for um, for safety reasons. Mm-hmm. But when you enter, uh, for what I have experienced, when you you know finish this uh, small tunnel of the entrance, you become you find yourself in a larger. Let's say it's a still a tunnel, but a larger tunnel. Yeah. So there is a room. It's um, it's five by um, four meter high. Uh, okay. So it's kind of, you know, it's still uh, uh, comfortable. And we were quite shocked of how uh, nice it felt inside because of the shape and um, of the of the underground. So, it's, uh, you know, it has this arc uh, shape and uh, it's connected with different uh, tunnels. And um, is, yeah, it, so is, it, is it like, um, how to say, metro station? When, like, I mean, like the, the, the size of it? No, no, no. It's definitely a bit smaller. Smaller. It's definitely smaller. So you can, the <clears throat> largest tunnel that we have been in, um, it has the width of uh, four and a half, five meters, maybe. Okay, not so. Uh, yeah, and the, uh, the height was also approximately the same, so for uh, four meters. And uh, does it uh, smell or? Um, no, that part of the city no? doesn't smell. <laughs> no, no. Um, so a lot of people think, okay, there were there might be rats. And... Yeah, yeah. No, but it wasn't like this because rats need food to survive on <laughs> since there is no food on the ground. Okay. So. <laughs> and but, like, was it uh, electricity or like completely dark? Um, yeah. So um, when we when we enter the uh, the German part uh, of the uh, of the building, mm. it, uh, def- it it still have electricity supplies. So uh, that was still nice to see. You know, yeah. we were still comfortable, and they had exhibition of uh, war related uh, um, topics hanging. Okay. Mm. And uh, so you know, you you start you you start to see uh, okay, this this really belongs to. Uh, to the war mm. um we were also told about how it was ventilated and uh, so the germans has decided to uh, put the ventilation through other tunnels so people in other tunnels have suffered from um ah. bad airs and okay. smells and etc but anyway um so this part is still good and in good shape good quality also mm. since the germans have used like 80 centimeter of concrete to build it so it's 80, a, 80. whoa so it's quite heavy. Yeah. Um, it was. It's, it's still some part have its finishing, but you see also some part of bullets on on, uh, on the walls. You see uh, people who have written some memories wow. for loved ones on the walls, definitely. And then there is a door, and you enter to another part of uh, the other tunnel. So the Germans had decided to connect their tunnels. The, the tunnel complex to the Italian ones, let's say, mm. or the ones that were developed by other parties like the municipality, etc. And that part is definitely the most neglected. So there is definitely nothing. There is no electricity. There is mm. no water supplies, nothing. Um, a lot of things are already under the water. Um, a lot ah, of okay. rooms are... On, Underground um, water? Yeah, yeah. There, so you see... But this is also very nice. I, for, in my, from my perspective, you see the erosion of um, of concrete. Yeah. And it's very beautiful. It's so interesting when you're telling me like this experience of seeing yeah, things as... Definitely. Yeah, definitely. So, but in that part, we needed to have, you know, our lights and walking around. So you This is a real underground tunnel. This is it. Exactly. <laughs> we were like, yay. Uh, but I, I felt like other colleagues were maybe a bit uh, not comfortable with, you know... Um, so we visited like really quickly. We made images. Um, I, I, tr- I managed to, uh, together with Mauricio, uh, to experiment with light. So if we put the, you know, our lights on this side, well, how the shadow would look on the other part. And mm. I managed to photograph that because I knew I want to do something with light yeah. uh, in general. Was and it then, was it more scary in the Italian? Like when the one with no electricity is not, not maintained? Yeah. Well... For, you. Uh, for from the first experience, yes. So the first time I mm. visited, it was definitely not not that comfortable. Okay. And the second time I visit, I was totally alone. So I was alone. alone, alone. Al- no, alone with Mauricio. Yeah, yeah. But um, because he opened the tunnel, of course, um, yeah. the, the tunnels for me. So I was glad that he did so. Um, but I was basically alone in this, this place, and um, 
just to overcome your fear, you know, you start uh, to listen carefully to the water dripping. Oh my God. Uh, you see, you know, you, uh, I think the experience there, it was so nice. I, I managed to absorb so much information wow. from the place. And uh, well, this is like really, I think I, I, I gave myself also like a clap. I, good, 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 yeah, uh, really, good really. job. Since yeah. it's really like uh, uh, to overcome such a, um, such an experience, such a collective memory. To yeah, it's like low. It. It's also the thing is that it's not, uh, it's not like underground garden or something. No, it was no. like a place. It's about war, death, yes. you know, blood and bad stuff. So it's not definitely. even easy to be there and definitely. to try to, to enjoy it. Yeah, definitely. But then, um, what I have done, I just simply focused on, um, on the natural elements. So the water dripping, the sounds the erosion, the colors of the erosion, um, you know, the different parts that are hanging from the ceilings, you know, the water drips on you. And um, what was your like best thing there underground? Oh my God, I really, oh, wow. So there was this the, in the end of the, um, of the tunnel that the municipality built, they wanted to, to create this air raid shelter, but you, to use it also in the future as a pedestrian tunnel. Okay. But they didn't manage to uh, excavate everything. So you see in the end, a part of excavation. And I, um, I convinced Mauricio that I can go into this part that is still not fully excavated or um, like fully uh, covered with concrete. So it was like really raw excavation. It was uh -huh. one meter, I think, in width. And <laughs> I had to, uh, I had to climb and uh, you know a ladder, an iron ladder that was already in very very bad shape. <laughs> and I went there. I stood in that part of the tunnel. I think that's the most uh, beautiful experience that I had. I think that. Uh, um, before me, probably there were some, um, you know, researchers who have vis visited this, this mm. place and went through this to the last point of this oh, uh, wow. tunnel. But for, uh, Mauricio didn't. Uh, That's I good, mean, Maurizio. my guy, my, my, my guide <laughs> wasn't really convinced that he can climb up and, and come <laughs> with me. So I went by my own. <laughs> so this was the best. What was the worst? Um, I think the mud. Uh, yeah, there. Mm. Since in the part that is not fully covered with concrete, mm. um, there is a lot of mud, and I was like quite scared that I would be trapped and hit my uh, height, like hit myself or something. Uh. But in general, I don't. Um, it was not. I mean, how many times I of how many time I spent there, it becomes more beautiful. You and, like it more, uh, and I like it more, mm. and. Uh, I, yeah. You, you change your memory about like it's dark and not good. Definitely. Oh. Definitely. I'm I'm more now into the dark than in the light. <laughs> <laughs> You're more Batman, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. But and I think um you can create very beautiful architecture when you consider um the qualities of elements. Yeah. And when you look beyond um the perception of others mm. and you know, we are so um influenced by our you know the of stories course, yeah. and surroundings course, yeah. and everything but once you start you know to say okay let's put this on the side and just mm. to look at just just to to look at it that's yeah. the the simplest thing that you ever can uh, do yeah and then you would um, you would definitely see a lot of qualities that you can incorporate in mm. your architecture and i think that's the key to create an architecture yeah definitely where, where the tunnels like really how how far are they from the surface? Like, did you need to go when you enter when you go uh, when you <laughs> enter the entrance? Yes. Do you take stairs or elevator or <sighs> no? So um, basically, you enter at the street level, which mm. is really nice. Uh, that's also a quality that the space has, and everything. Uh, so it's located in a hill. So on mm. one side you have the entrances of uh, of it, and on the other part you would see that the the whole channel was try to you know climb up also with the hill so there is an uh, and kind of of a small uh um height uh, differences but mm. you will you won't even feel it it's really uh. Uh, nicely done and um i think from the start um i know that uh, at the beginning of the tunnel you if we call it like level zero um at the end of the tunnel you would be like 17 a meter height but since the hill is also climbing up, so you ah, don't okay. feel it. 
So it goes up with the mm. with the hill. Uh, since also the um, the structure of the underground doesn't allow for a lot of depth, mm. so you need to have a, a margin between you and the surface okay. to the ground to still stay stable in that mm. sense. Mm. Uh, so that comes to approximately thirty meter high. Interesting. Yeah. So you did your research and then you visited the tunnels, and you saw this the light pollution, then the darkness, and then you went back home. Mm-hmm. And tell me, what is your, um, how did you work on your design proposal? Well, it was definitely at first, um, my tutors had uh, seen a lot of qualities in this project, mm. but they were, um, they wanted, um, or they directed me to to create more an, an architecture that is built about around the, the senses. Since we are talking about individual memory, yeah. and that was like the aim, okay, now we have this bad collective memory. Uh, how to create a new uh, counter memory it's then by to first to create an individual memories for several members mm. that they uh, by themselves can create a kind of a group and it, that would create a collective memory in okay. this sense um so yeah what i have done i started to do my case studies researching light even more building the tunnels mm. uh, in my room and darking everything and wow. <laughs> and making you know images from that but also like studying other people's work. So um, I studied a lot uh, um, uh, the work of James Turrell and, you know, this um, the Herodian crater um, and how he uh, made these openings in the underground that serve specific light, etc. Uh, and I have also looked to um, other artists that are, they, they incorporate art uh, in their designs. But also, I have like looking at it from an architectural point of view. Um, I have also studied the work of Peter Zumthor since he really centers the uh, the architecture around the senses and around mm. textures and time, and it's just really beautiful. I uh, think of course to study. Um, so yeah, that that's that's how I you know picked up the whole uh, the whole phase like doing you know studying art, studying architecture, building a model, modeling it uh, in uh, softwares and testing it out, and uh, eventually like also studying astronomical um, events to make them visible under uh. the ground. Uh, so my you know the whole building would be also a kind of not an observatory, but a place where you can still observe this astronomical events. And um, yeah, around that, yeah, yeah, around that, I uh, I was like going back and forth between, you know, the daylight and uh, mm. a specific timing. So there is also like in my design, um, I have like, for example, for the gathering room, I like made the specific timing. So a specific positioning also of the opening and about on the structure of the building to create you know this yeah a yeah, light arrow yeah. that hits exactly that position <laughs> that uh it's really i i think yeah. I, I, looking back at it i think it's really nice uh, yeah. in that sense and um of course not to forget to i have also included the technical part of how mm. to dig under the ground how okay. to connect with um you know often with an existing tunnel and since our uh Architectural study doesn't really uh, focus on the underground, mm. you know. So it was for me like digging into the civil engineering uh, <laughs> section yeah, yeah, and yeah. trying to find methods and uh, ways to build, mm. uh, you know, to create and, and design for this underground. Yeah. Uh, and so eventually, I uh, made um, so I assigned as I mentioned. So you observe the the space in segments. And uh, I thought, okay, then it's, um, probably my uh, uh, my design should be also in segments. And okay. so I assigned for each tunnel and specific function. Mm. So um, there is a, a, a public toilet, there is a public bathhouse, there is a pedestrian route, and uh, there is I tr- the let's say the larger part, which is the um, uh, the German part. I transformed the function to become. Um, and light and darkness exhibition instead of war exhibition mm. with adding and several of openings in the space to still to observe these astronomical events uh, through the design. Yeah. So in that sense, um, I think I managed to create a different, um, a different memory mm. and mm. counter memory in the space. But just to think about it, when if you don't know that this was an air raid shelter, if you don't know this was a place where war happened, 
you would probably look at another type of qualities of course, that yeah. are there. Yeah. Um, and I have also uh, created uh, eventually this connection between um, what happens above the ground and under the ground by creating an, a meditation room that mm. leads in, in a way to an underground tunnel that eventually they would come up and you would um, climb it up and you would be in this uh, inner hidden garden in the city. It's a beautiful garden. No one have changed it since the the beginning. Wow! <laughs> and um, it's also not used. Uh, wow. So in that sense, you would end up as an uh, you know kind of a small present for uh, the visitors. That, That's um, so beautiful. Yeah, that you would. Uh, but all the in. functions you're you're introducing needs a lot of technical uh, infrastructure. Like definitely. Uh, but this mm. is maybe going to change the tunnel as a, as the tunnel. You know, like what I'm. Uh, want to tell here is that you have the tunnel mm -hmm. and you want to keep something from that reminds you of the original shape or and so on definitely uh, how is this related to what you introduce um so yeah as i mentioned i um the the key was is also to find a new means for the tunnel so mm -hmm. and instead of saying okay and uh, public bathhouse doesn't really fit in the tunnel shape what if we um, shape the function to the tunnel instead mm. of fun you know changing yeah. the tunnel to the function yeah and uh, by that you would f i think it also creates some kind of interesting architecture that sometimes you don't really need to mm. you know change a lot of shape to understand um, how it works or how yeah. to to create a different type of architecture so my approach was uh first to uh, find a new means for the tunnel so if there is if there you know if the shower fits in a tunnel that's okay if we can t transform a tunnel into um you know into um a swimming pool that's okay we can do that mm. Uh, instead of changing the tunnel but also to add uh, what i have also done i have added in, in interventions on the side to experiment with using the tunnel as in circulation space mm. and um and lastly to add you know these spaces that have this connection with you know yeah. with the uh, with the upper layer of the underground uh, but yeah, for for sure, it was like definitely uh, worth it to um, you know to investigate how would an underground tunnel yeah. become a swimming pool. Yeah, and um, and f uh, definitely from a technical uh, point of view, it's quite difficult since we are talking about a shape that is already there. It's mm. you know you cannot demolish. No, no. You know you can only take out. I mean you can demolish, but it's not you know the the thing is, is that like mm. a lot of these historical buildings. Um, if you want to introduce functions that we use today, mm -hmm. you just destroy the building because it's, they build it for a specific dimensions. And then with our mm -hmm. today's regulation, you need to have this for safety, you need to have this for, let's say, yeah. electricity. You just kind of creating um, just a modern, uh, a new place. You, you don't like, you don't keep mm -hmm. the soul, the identity, the look of the, that place. I think this is a tricky yeah. When you redesign a exactly no definitely so I, I also have struggled with this fact like, like okay you know and uh, and shower for example needs to have a specific width and you yeah know? but I think I was lucky to have you know I big I, tunnel I, yeah no actually <laughs> actually when the Italian part it was like a width of three meters so um, that's you know <laughs> <laughs> but it's really interesting to have to place a function there and to say okay yeah this is the tunnel since it's also like it's really difficult to mm. dig uh, inside an existing tunnel so I had also uh, and done an quite extensive research of on what type of uh, equipment could enter this place and okay, yeah. you know and how to demolish mm. some mm. some parts to create like for example an entrance from this place to mm. another place etc yeah so yeah, in that case, I think uh, it's it's. I think every architect should once say like um, we don't need to demolish the whole building or the uh -huh. whole uh, area, but just to f to try to instead of um, adjusting the building to the function, to adjust the function to the um, to the space. Mm. And in that sense, yeah, it was definitely uh, worth the try. Yeah, yeah. Um, eventually, uh, since you know the. Um, uh, it was not sure if there was already a ground laid uh, down in the mm. tunnels, since a lot of parts uh, of it, it was already under the water and was uh, 
uh, there was like a layer of mud and mm. uh, investigating that was quite impossible. Mm. So I decided in my proposal to uh, to place all these uh, functions under uh, under the ground again. So under the floor, yeah. Um, it was e easier to dig. You know, it's mm. easier to dig the ground than to dig from the ceiling, since you know you uh, are risking that the whole uh, yeah, would tunnel collapse. would collapse. True. And exactly. Mm. Um, and by that, I have uh, in my proposal, I have managed to put all uh, necessary uh, elements. So like water, electricity, uh, if needed in specific places, of course. Mm. And I've also like uh, said, uh, um, there is no, definitely no light in specific rooms uh, in my at all. Uh, at all. So that would be in the part uh, of the public bathhouse, and it's more of a relaxing room where you, the where you come back to your uh, senses. So like there not even you, candles. No, nothing. Um, how how are we going to navigate? No, you, so you there is a light until the door, but yeah. after that there is goodbye. Yeah, after that, <laughs> there is. Yeah, you need. Um, it's very interesting topic actually, since uh, there are a lot of people that um now trying to meditate into the darkness and create like really under the ground, uh, closed uh, rooms where mm. you stay there for a week to just. You know, a week. A week. Yes. Wow. It's uh, it's done by uh, the Yes Theory uh, okay. group on YouTube. It's really nice. And uh, you try you after coming out of the ground, you definitely you know you see colors better, and um, yeah, it's, it's like different feelings. It's like you you would born you would be born again. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so my last visit to uh, to the underground, I spent there approximately six hours or so. I don't remember exactly. That's also interesting since under the ground you cannot navigate time. Uh, uh, really? No, you can't because you lose the Sensor. sense of daylight. So you cannot, <laughs> you do, you wouldn't know. Wow. Um, like what time or no. I mean, how long have you? No, I, I didn't. So interesting. It's really interesting. And that thinking about our daily lives, you know, how we are busy with mobiles, with uh, laptops yeah. and working behind the screens and everything. Maybe, and you know, a visit to underground. Uh, Back to dark. the nature. Yeah, exactly. Would, you know, do a reset to your senses and uh, your Maybe feelings. Maybe, yeah, I think sometimes we became like really, really, really far away from this darkness or because yeah. like we have screen behind the screen behind the, like I have my phone, then my laptop, then my t the big TV screen, you know, yeah, like yeah. Tons of screens and lights, and so, we are yeah. like very used to be in the light, mm -hmm. yes. but not in the. So we we were we were uh, we of course yeah we yeah, were yeah, yeah. humans that uh, yeah. can we incorporate mm. light, light and darkness, but yeah, unfortunately, I think we lost this um, the quality of the darkness yeah. uh, of uh, our perceptions changed. Yeah, and just uh, like thinking about it and again uh, rethinking it, I think we can definitely go mm. back at least to pick up some of the qualities that are left behind yeah. for sure what was the the or were the challenges you faced when you started to do the design proposal um so yeah the, the, there is definitely the, the difficulty that you don't see it as a whole so mm. as a designer we are definitely uh used to see you know you, you want to see the shape of a building yeah. you, want, you know yeah. you want to play with volumes mm. while under the ground a designing process is actually taking out of the volume so you are subtracting the whole time of, uh, you know <laughs> um and i had i had cool. to find a way in you know in designing in pieces and rather than than one whole thing since you know it's you cannot imagine it. You can, of course, you can build it, you know, in uh, um, in software Model, models. Yeah. And I did so. I did so just to observe how yeah. it would. But I eventually, <laughs> I, you cannot, you know, you cannot say, okay, I make a render from from the outside because there is no render <laughs> on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> so you you know yeah. and, and i had to think exactly in uh snapshots in in you know in frames in fragments of you know now the day is coming the day like this coming is hitting this a specific place and i had to do also my math to adjust the you know ah. the angles and everything to to make it work cool. and to make it visible um so yeah i think that was quite it's definitely a different type of working method um from what we are used yeah, to yeah yeah so you, can you, can we can we put the link of your thesis for the listeners to click on see 
Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. I, uh, you can yeah. send me later. I can send you later. For all, sure. all the images are are black, dark. Um, <laughs> yeah, you have seen my portfolio. <laughs> yeah. Her portfolio is just like uh, everything is dark. I was well, like, well, the first I, project. The I first thought <laughs> <laughs> when I told you to send me like your portfolio, yeah, it's like dark, and I was like, uh, did she forgot to uh, fix the colors or what's happening no, here? <laughs> no. Um, the thing is that um. You also like looking at these images from my graduation project. You also need to be in a kind of dimmed um, room. So uh, you will you... never get a job then. <laughs> just kidding. No, <laughs> you put a lot of requirements on there. No, 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 not, uh, not no, no. Because also, like when I presented, I needed to be, you know, and it, uh, really, yeah, you did that. No, no. I, I my aim was to to present under the the set of, in the cellar of the TU, though, <laughs> but it never happened. But you make like a dark room, or no? You kept it um, like normal. I tried to dim it as much as oh, possible, okay. but yeah. eventually, uh, and I took also the light out, but. Um, eventually yeah. it was like eight o'clock in the morning <laughs> <laughs> so it was no Interesting. way yeah. so so what, nice. what happened with the like after you did your proposal did you send this somewhere or not um you mean inside the university or like inside outside did you send it to a municipality or well not so far i still have contact with um uh, my contact person from the Kleine berlin and we are definitely thinking about to create this um, this proposal and to send it to uh, the yeah. municipality for sure. It's still on the list uh, mm. to check it. That's for sure. Um, I know it's a difficult project, uh, and it's probably something that um, not um, easy to happen in terms of technical stuff, oh, in yeah. terms of economical yeah. uh, reasons for sure. Um, and I think that's also one of the reasons why these spaces are neglected, just because it's how expensive mm. to transform them to something else. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, I think I think it's definitely worth a try, or at mm. least to you know, to um, maybe taking it to the extreme as I did is also a way to see new things. Maybe. Yeah. You know, just like an inspiration to inspiration start to do to, something. Exactly. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. So yes. you wish, with your proposal, let's see, they will build it. Yes. And let's say you have a pro your proposal on the ground, or sorry, under the ground. Under the ground. So you think you will change people's um, memory about these tunnels? Well, actually, yes, mm. uh, definitely for sure. And I think um, also talking about it, like I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that I have changed your perception about the underground. A little bit, the... yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. No, for me, I like the underground. Like <laughs> I have been in different undergrounds, yeah. like one for. A club one for uh, just yeah. you know but not not the underground as uh, as for war of course yes in baghdad we we went to the underground to be protected yes that's why like i hate the underground underground yeah sure well in my case i we didn't we never went under the ground we mm. usually left the city to go outside yeah um and uh but yeah the feeling of the you know there is uh, yeah. no electricity and uh it was quite dark and mm. but also listening from the story like i mean um in the air shade air raid shelter of al amaria mm. which was also like bombarded uh, in uh, yeah. 1991 i believe so it's yeah. even before i was born mm. but we still have this memory but, all of us yeah we have the, yeah exactly because we were reading on on this uh, in, in the, the books and we were seeing like images yeah. uh, and so on um and then the like what i experienced is that like it was also bombing like the city was bombed and we went to another city mm -hmm. underground, underground but still bombed us <laughs> yeah so we couldn't even like um, how to say escape yeah. so like my memory from from this kind of shelters is very bad yes because like all what i remember is like people uh, screaming uh, children crying you know definitely sound no. of bombs and so on no. so I like for me it. let's say for me um if you ask me um why you let's say i i still live in baghdad and we have this kind of shelters if you ask mm -hmm. me okay uh do you want to see this i say no just like i don't want to remember this memory at all i want to i don't want to recall yes. so let's just like a close close this and put them away yeah but what you're telling me not what you're telling me now is a beautiful thing is that let's well, open and re purpose definitely so i like i i totally agree like mm. for in, in the case let's let's take uh, al amaria uh air raid shelter uh, for an example so i i i don't think you should transform this place since there is an, a major event happened there 
you know? Yeah. You should not take it. Keep, keep it as a memory. Yeah, because we, exactly. This should be as a memory. But just considering other parts of, of the underground air raid shelters, um, I think, yeah, there was be, they, they probably would be, you know, some kind mm. of reaction yeah. to it. Yeah. But just, you know, looking mm. at it from an architectural point of view, from an uh, urbanistic point of view, mm. it would, I mean, it definitely has some qualities. Of it's course. not necessary to become a museum or a bathhouse or in that <laughs> sense, but it can be, you know, it can be a, a gallery or, yeah. a, you I mean, know. it's some function to serve the per, what community needs. Yeah, exactly. Because m my concern is what, when you separate these, um, you know, when you separate the underground, Places yeah. from the upper city. When you separate any type of architecture mm -hmm. in the city, you're creating these gaps in your urban fabric. Mm -hmm. You know, so what? And yeah. eventually, in the end, mm -hmm. you know, you you are, you are we will be facing problems. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think the thing is that when when you told me about your thesis and told me about collective memory and individual memory, and you want to change this. And I was like, you're an outsider. Why you go there and you tell people, no, let's change this. Let's change your memory. Yeah. And I was like, it's like a kind of disrespectful, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why also I invited you. So I want to understand more how do you think and how. But now after you tell explaining to me, I see it makes so much sense as outsider coming to the community that suffer from like the underground yeah. and telling them, okay, this is good for you. We can change this. You, we have more space. Uh, you can put functions you need. Uh, this will help you also maybe to remove some kind of this um, bad memories or sad memories and, Tension, and, and say, replace yeah. it with maybe more interesting. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm definitely an outsider to this community. But the thing is, I feel if you are like from the region of you are, uh, you know, you would have some kind of bias. Yeah. Um, and um, like... I think I would like if we design this in Iraq, I would it would be also a bias since I'm Iraq as well. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this so in that sense, but may, maybe like designing it in, in the Netherlands, I am also Dutch, but it's different since yeah. I didn't live the war. Um, it's, uh, in, in yeah, the you need it's in, out of the type, box. So you need exactly. the person out of the I think shelter. So. And uh, maybe I think. It, I think every architect can do, can take this role and can take this position of simply looking at the architectural elements instead of, you know, putting in a lot of story and Without pressure. Without any bias? Um, probably. I th well, you think but, so? <laughs> I hope so. Okay. Or my, I hope so. I no, really, no, not hope. You think it is or not? I think it's possible Okay. for each. I mean, we are... Uh, from our studies, we need to be a scientific and academic and, yeah. you know... And but anyway, architecture has some bias since we are talking about you know shapes and mm. it's the beautiful not and mm. you know identity so, feelings identity and feelings everything. all these yeah, things yeah. and these all all these things have some kind of bias in them. Yeah. Um, but I think yeah, like you know, just take it back to basic. Mm. Um, look at the shape, analyze the shape only, mm. analyze the temperature only. Like really, you know, these are specific elements. Mm. Um, Analyze, you know, the routing only and not looking about, okay, there were like, you know, uh, Germans walking around or mm. uh, there is, um, these people have yeah. done, you know, bad things here or there. Just to look at the qualities and to decide, okay, um, the, for example, the underground of the, um, of the Kleine Berlin, um, maybe the shape of the tunnel uh, has some positive, uh, you know, yeah, impact yeah. and you, you decide to incorporate mm. it. Or uh, maybe, you know, this. how far are you from the surface and can you put, you know, still a yeah. light shaft in there? Is that, that also considered as a quality, mm. but also, you know, the groundwater, which is a dripping and it's a beautiful sound, you know, it's very much Is it relaxing. a beautiful sound? It is. I like, well, you I, like it? I, 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 scary? I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't experience <laughs> it, but I saw in the movie, like, it's very annoying, like, top. it's like this, right? Yeah. Dropping? Yeah, it's a dropping. I, I, find like it, it? I find it relaxing. <laughs> But hey, hey, I'm the weird one. I went on the thing. <laughs> yeah, so you, so you think it's not disrespectful that you as an outsider go to a community and tell them, uh, do this, do this, forget your memory. This is a new no, memory. No, 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 no. I, I definitely don't say forget your memory. I, I What I say is look at the quality of this space mm. and work with the quality. Mm. Don't, uh, you know, don't put a lot of pressure and on something that is you know mm. 
because the, if if we say this memory would stay forever, what will happen? These spaces would stay there forever. You say this no, is the no first scenario. Would, you know, no one would would like use now. it. Yeah. Uh, or probably um, they would, um, you know, um, put you know the the front of them for you know other works. For example, in the in the example of Kleine Berlin, they use you know the the uh, the entrance of one of the tunnels as a shop. But nothing further. There is like an forty meters, or ah, yeah, yeah. you yeah. know, fifty meters behind, and it's not in use. Mm. Um, but you know, so you have these gaps in your urban fabric that, if someone, if not if it, used, yeah. exactly, it can lead to cr criminal activities. It can be used yeah. in a bad way. Yeah, know? yeah. So why why do that? Why not? Mm. You know, in a city like Trieste, who suffers from this light pollution, from mm. this tension. Why? Why would you not look basically at the qualities of true, the space? True. Um, and yeah, in that sense, I don't think I. I at least I didn't handle it uh, with a disrespect. So um, when I when I I was like quite humble when I you know. How, how did they uh, when when you met them? Yeah. How did they react? Um, so um, the local the, people you did interviews. I, I yeah I yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah. I um, or at least from uh, from the local guy that he yeah. he uh, yeah. took us uh, or took me uh, into the tunnels. He was really happy that there is someone you Cheering. know highlight mm. this the quality mm. of yeah. this space. Yeah. Um, I don't think any space in the city should be neglected in in such a way, mm. uh, above the ground or under the True. ground. Because also in Trieste, a lot of buildings are empty and yeah especially in the old parts. And I think, oh, oh my God, this is, you know, this is still yeah, beautiful yeah. architecture. There is, a, there is a quality in there. So why losing it? True. Why destroying it and building new things? Yeah, this, I think this is the beautiful thing with your thesis or the way you think is that using every single space that we have on the ground, under the ground, because it's like sustainable stand of building, let's say a Ba public bathroom, I, I don't know, football or something, yeah, football yeah. plan. Yeah, yeah. If we can use the existing spaces we sure. have instead of creating a new, so yeah. also maybe yeah. it's yeah. not it's sustainable it's for the planet, like just building new, 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 you know, like maybe reusing what Definitely. we have. Definitely. Um, hmm. So if you look at uh, throughout my portfolio or my work experience, I couldn't I, see anything, um, it's dark. No, no, nothing is. <laughs> just, just kidding. <laughs> but there is a lot of transformation yeah, yeah, of and uh, yeah. renovation, and so, mm. uh, yeah, why, why not? And also, if you want to build something for the future or something new, you invent a new yeah. building. Why don't you make it in such a way that you can take it apart mm. and reuse it somewhere else, or, um, yeah, create and future scenarios for its use. Uh, so yeah, I think in, in our role as architects, especially nowadays, we need to figure out this stuff uh, yeah. way ahead in the design process to be able to, you know, create yeah. an architecture that lasts uh, and so a good amount of time. We, I cannot say an architecture that, uh, you know, survives forever, mm -hmm. but just uh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. It's also like to see what other people don't see, yeah. so you can come with some inspiration, solution, and sure. something yeah. out of the box. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, in my example, you know, going under the ground and trying to invent something new, um, there's a, definitely. Um, yeah. I mean, the, if you look at it from a realistic point of view, there is, you know, the technical difficulties, of the course. economical. There is. Yeah, the, yeah. You know, but just to give it the hint, mm. maybe you know, just maybe something will happen. Maybe. Who knows? Who yeah, knows? Yeah. But why you didn't like approach this kind of uh, underground nightclub or uh, and so on? Because like usually these are super popular, like this. Oh, hidden, under, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm familiar with that. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, I yeah, that's that's also a part of the respect that I wanted to. I I didn't find it very appropriate to put you know, um, a dance floor in a tunnel where people you know were killed yeah, and. Yeah. I wanted to make an, an quiet space that is, you know, where you can go back to your senses as a person. I feel when you are, you know, in a, in a night club, you focus not only about yourself, but also about the people surrounding you. Mm -hmm. So you are in a different type of, uh, you know, uh, action and reaction. Yeah, uh, you process. celebrate. You yeah. celebrate. Yeah. And I don't think the city can, at least Trieste now with this stigma around this space, I don't think it can handle okay. mm. Such a celebration at this location. Uh, yeah, at, yeah, at, at least. this time. Exactly. Mm. So, 
I mean, yeah, who knows in the future, but I wouldn't recommend that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I understand. Wouldn't. So my, the, the thing is with, uh, you know, creating a public bathroom or public um, bathhouse, mm -hmm. it's also about, you know, serving the needs, but um, also in a humble way. So the, the yeah. bathhouse, you know, you, you just you immerse yourself with this darkness and mm. you have this quiet experience of the water and the different temperature and the different smells and you kind of do a kind of a detox from the light and True. you come back to your senses mm. in a calm way so and for example in the in the idea of this uh, uh exhibition space where you dedicate it to the light and darkness you um, you also giving a message on guys. There is a quality that we are now losing outside of the underground yeah, since it's yeah. so much light polluted. Can we do something about it? Mm. Um, but also to experience the qualities of the light again. You know the the exact the light ray uh, when it hits in, in position or an object or on screen and um, and also to respect the underground environment. Since I am like this was also a key element in my design that I really wanted to. Uh, still give this um, erosion a place in my design. So okay. you see, in, you see, there are a lot of uh, not handled surfaces and areas, so mm. the erosion can build up on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, as a, as an architectural designer, I really have a respect for the material and its life yeah. uh, cycle. So I uh, feel like um, we should give it a space to breathe and live and die and yeah, it, yeah. You know, so in that sense, yeah. I love it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't think uh, maybe and clubhouse is not the most appropriate, <laughs> but definitely I understand. An, yeah, to keep, an, to keep the respect, of course. An exhibition mm. is uh, in that sense. Yeah, I wanted to ask yeah. you when you went with your colleagues down, and you mm -hmm. for them it was a bit like maybe scary or not really comfortable when you want to like go further. Mm -hmm. It was dark, right? Yeah, but because also there were like parts that are that were not public. Okay. Uh, so we were not allowed to enter when we were mm. together. But of mm. course, when I went alone, um, it was easy to convince <laughs> <laughs> Marisia. Yeah. yeah. Um, Did you, because me and you, we experienced when we were in Baghdad, like there were days or months yeah. of no electricity and everything was sure. dark. So we just left like uh, how old people left, you know, like uh, yeah, back in the centuries. Yeah, just li lighting the candles. From yeah. the lighting the candles or the sunlight. Um, was it maybe this helped you when you were underground, like, okay, you, you kind of experienced the darkness. Yeah, so the first time I was not completely. I okay, mean, we yeah. had, you know, still these uh, lights in our hands yeah. and it was still come some kind of okay. Yeah. But I, I noticed that my colleagues, they were like really looking around. And for me, it was, I was more comfortable with that mm. in that sense. Mm. Uh, there were like definitely some part where I felt, you know, when it was narrow, um, in this space, I didn't feel comfortable. Yeah. Um, it was like there were some tunnels that are um, mm. low in ceilings and quiet, you know, and narrow. So in that sense, I didn't feel comfortable. But in the darkness in general, like having the possibility to have a light in your hand already mm. uh, yeah. takes a lot of the pressure mm. on, on your shoulders. So in that sense, I, I felt I was calm in, yeah, yeah. in that sense. Um but I remember, I remember that one of my calls was really, like really scared because we entered the tunnel where there was a spider and spider species that was like uh, not native to the space and uh, was really, yeah, they were afraid of the spiders. <laughs> of course. <laughs> for yeah. The, for a, so yeah, in that mm -hmm. sense, um, there's definitely this part of me where I think, okay, this reminds me back of uh, uh, the dark days in, mm. in Baghdad, but... I think yeah, you you we kind of overcome it, or we we learn how to deal with it. Yeah, I think we learned. Uh, so even though that I felt like in the first uh, first time I wasn't like hundred percent comfortable with the darkness, mm. um, I knew how I can handle it. Yeah, and I think that was a key in my yeah. case to to cool. survive this journey. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And for the listener, if they may be wondering why there is no electricity for weeks or months in Baghdad, yeah. like because of the war. Uh, let's say they bomb the electricity. What do you call it? Station yeah, generator. Yeah, the, 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 the generators. For yeah. Sure, so yeah. there is no electricity basically, and there is no government yeah. to build this. And yeah, fix but the, especially the last. I mean, in the last war of two thousand and three, um, I think we spent. Uh, at least it happens like the 9th of April. Mm. The uh, officially the 
the, the Iraqi army surrendered. Um, but we had electricity for a couple of hours, like in the beginning of maybe in the ending of, yeah, yeah. of July or August somewhere. So yeah. it was like, I still remember it was super, super hot. And yeah. um, it, it, yeah. it's also like how we lived I, until I think until now, it's like this, you have a schedule yeah, yeah. because the, the electricity... Um, what do you call it? power plants? Yeah, I think. the power plants were not uh, sufficient enough to supply the whole city. Yes, so, so you have like a schedule the, the of schedule of cutting hours. Yeah, and that was maybe the worst part for me <laughs> as a kid. I really hated it. I tried yeah. to sleep just before the electricity would go out. And yeah, you know, so you don't. Yeah, you don't. But it, exactly, but it's a different type of fear. Of course, yeah, yeah. I mean. Uh, um, no, but it was like a schedule. Let's say you get the electricity four hours per day from this hour to this hour. Yeah. And that time we like gather everything that like the um, freezer, so you can yeah. uh, freeze the food. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah I don't know. Like so charge cool. the lights. Charge the lights and uh, do your own stuff if you play need PlayStation. To, I don't know if you need to use uh, to do something. I mean, to style your hair. Think about it. Skills yeah, yeah. of wash, wash the clothes. Wash the clothes. The or washing something. machine. Uh, so you have, uh, and uh, since I lived in uh, in Al Qadisiya. We had the, the 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 district was um was how to call it was um had a different schedule so not the whole district would yeah go off. different blocks different blocks uh, and yeah. would go uh, on and off yeah and I knew uh, some people who would take you know a wire from one house from <laughs> the other district and it's nice there <laughs> but yeah it's I, I definitely mean, destroying the city image of course um, destroying like everyday life uh, yeah. I, I remember like um. For some weeks, we didn't have at all. And mm -hmm. for me, like, there was, I forgot what is like a TV or a PlayStation or, yeah. you know, like, it's become like a, f feels like we lived in the, like, 400 years ago, you know, like, of yeah, only on candles. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, like, uh, you know, lighting the candles and everything. But also, um, I feel like we have also the advantage of not yeah, using yeah. A lot of TV. Yeah. I mean, we Stone were uh, yeah, <laughs> we were a lot outside playing. I was mostly playing with Mahad and uh, yeah, you know yeah. making my family a bit angry. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But I think we had the privilege of mm, not yeah. using a screen. It's, True. Um, and I still till this day I still uh, try to take you know some days off of screen. You so do just, that? Yeah, I do that. How? Um, like especially in the summer. Mm. I would, uh, if I if if I am on vacation for sure, I would take you know I would close everything and I won't watch TV or uh, look at um, okay, my cool. phone and close like close it off completely, um, and uh, yeah for a while then it would be like uh, ten days or two weeks and so on. Nice. Um, it's also a good way to detox yeah. Yeah. from everything. We are living in a world where it's a lot of information mm. and a lot of pressure. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, so just uh, put it off. <laughs> I I don't have like I sold my TV. I don't have TV for like for the last four or five years. I don't have TV mm. uh, because I, I think TV is super boring. You like I the channels, the content, and yes. everything. <laughs> but but now like I'm a lot on my laptop screen and phone screen. Like, Definitely, let's no, say I every can... single hour, minute, I'm there. Yeah, I. Uh, it's also this feeling of being connected. You know, the necessity of being yeah, yeah, connected. Yeah, yeah. What if you don't connect? What if you connect with something else? Mm. And uh, what if you live in the dark? <laughs> for example, it's not only living in dark. Like, um, I several days I just also take it off to work in the garden at my parents' house. Mm, that's and good. It's good for you know, you. it's it's something like it, it helps me to you know to set everything good mentally. Like, yeah. especially in a garden, you need to have a patient and, you know, mm. for things to bloom and things to work. Yeah. But I also like to read a lot. Mm. And I don't read on screens. I read from books. Um, okay, so cool. I have to, you know, a lot of old people school. have, yeah, old school books. <laughs> I have a lot of books. <laughs> so I read a lot and, or do like knitting work. Mm. Uh, it helps your, you know, when you move your hand, you move your mind as well. That's as true. my grandmother used to say. That's very true. Um. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, watercoloring mm, is really cool. nice. I um, I become be, of became in contact with it during my internship at Doc Architects. Mm. Uh, Elizabeth van der Poel, she's a she's a beautiful architect. Do a lot of uh, sketches with watercolor, and I 
And I was really like, wow, this is, you know, this new medium yeah. of letting it loose, perfectly imperfect. Um, and, uh, you know, it's also, um, it's a meditating in a way, but also uh, creative in another way. That's and true. Uh, so I, I try also to do, to do that and yeah. to incorporate it and to take the time out since I don't have any underground mm. <laughs> shelters <laughs> nearby. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, so yeah that, no, definitely. And I think everyone should have this kind of habits where you um, just basically not do what you need to do. Like, yeah, exactly. You know? Like do something new or something different that things exactly. you do in your daily life. Yeah. Definitely. So if you are an architect sitting, you know, weeks, Mm. behind the screens uh, do a podcast do a podcast <laughs> come to Sweden <laughs> but uh, before um, we have another section about yeah. uh, like uh, your personal life and yeah. so on yeah um, before we move to the next section tell me so what is your dream with this project or next step with the project you mm. presented to us today well so um after my graduation, I came involved with other type of projects as well. Mm. So not only focusing on the darkness and light and this theme, but also looking at it from the AI perspective. Okay. So I'm conducting currently in personal research on how to incorporate AI into uh, creating proposals, uh, creating inspiration image with, mm. you know, prompting words. So just simply telling the AI uh, to imagine several mm. scenes or specific scene that you have in mind. Um, and I'm hoping to take this further, to incorporate it even further in the design process. A lot of people think, oh, now this is like, you know, a wave that would um, hide away mm. after a while. And that might be it's also true, that the wave of uh, AI would take its place for a while and it would vanish. Um, but I think as an architect, uh, we need to master these tools before they would master us. Okay. Um, so just you know, to uh, to know it at mm. least. Oh, that that's my aim, just to know how to use it. Yeah. Um so see, see you know the possibilities. Exactly. Yeah. So in the future, um, you know, the client won't say, Hey, the AI has made this and I want you to build it. Ah. You know, that's I think that's the key just um, yeah. in that sense. And I have been lately involved with the Syrian Turkey architecture recovery team mm. workshop. Uh, where we have uh, done uh, a proposal to build and quick uh, shelters for people who have uh, suffered from the earthquake in Turkey and okay. Syria. Uh. And uh, we're hoping with the next phase to take this to the next level and to build and prototype on uh, on site. So, Amazing. Um, cool. Yeah. Cool. Good working, job. Yes, really. thank you so much. Yeah. So working on several uh, things at the moment, but also looking for a new opportunity where I can really uh, incorporate, you know, my knowledge that I have built during my architectural uh, mm. studies to put it, you know, in a practice yeah. um, somewhere. So, yeah. Interesting. That's, uh, that's so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Super cool. So, um, then let's move to the yeah. next section. Yeah. Are you ready? That. I'm ready. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let me take a sip of water. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you can drink yeah, water. No, yeah, yeah. You, you can say the other question. <laughs> My question is like, what gives you energy to do and motivates you to do what you do? <clears throat> well, knowing that, um, knowing that whatever I make and design can influence people's perception and feelings mm. is a quite powerful tool. Mm. And it's also one of the reasons why I started to, you know, to do architecture. And um, I really see the power in, in, you know, making someone happy with architecture or maybe sad. Sometimes it's also... <laughs> you know, like I, yeah. I was like, um, and I, I have, I have experienced that when I visited the Jewish Museum by uh, Diane Lipskin in Berlin. Mm. Um, there were like there were several rooms. They were like basically empty from objects, but I stood there to cry literally just because mm. of the, you know, how dramatic the yeah. light was, and you know, so you can mm. you, you can give. A, a, people specific feeling and I think that th this is the power of architecture of how to make mm. people feel and experience yeah. a specific uh, um, space mm. um, so yeah that's uh, that's one of the reasons can you go back to the question because question I, is that yeah, what, what, motivates? What, what motivates me yeah so that's that's the thing you know why I, I how, how it gives me a motivation um, but also the design process itself it mm. motivates me I like this process of 
you know, trying different me mediums, going back and forth, mm -hmm. building a model and rendering something, but also make a physical model or a sketch model that is like, you, you know, yeah. uh, made from rubber chest. Stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's the process of, um, I don't like routine as a person. Okay. So I like when there is a movement. Things uh, happening. Things happening, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Using different things. I, As you see, as, as I mentioned, I have so many hobbies, but the thing is, the why of why I have so many hobbies is just because I don't like to do a routine and one specific yeah, things. Yeah. And I think in the design process, since you don't, you never design the same building again. No. And even if you design the same building again, you would be so much further in time and age and knowledge that you yeah, that would be, that would yeah. turn out to be different. And I think that's what gives me the power to or what motivates me to go further. Is definitely this going back and forth process and yeah. trying different things for sure. Cool. Yeah. And what do you want people to say or tell about you in the future, let's say 100 years from now, when they read your name or talk about your name? What do you want to be associated with? Well, darkness. that's really, well, <laughs> <laughs> the one that worked with darkness. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and the dark, the dark um, soul. You know, a lot of designers are, um, you know, or let's say, no, no, no. A lot of people have the necessity to be remembered. And when I read your question, I was like, if I ever want to be remembered, then mm. it doesn't, I want to be remembered as a good person. You know? You want to be remembered uh, as a bad person? Or? No, no, no. Just a good, you know, a good person that have left a mark in, you know, in the building environment. So mm. They have done something good, you know? Yeah. Um, maybe changing, you know, the perception about something or mm. creating a space where people in 100 years still can go and experience yeah. a specific uh, feeling or uh, experience a specific, um, you know, type of architecture. That's something is definitely I want to be remembered for. Mm. But if I'm not remembered, um, it's, you know, it's not... The thing is, I want to do good now. I want to be remembered now and not, you know. It's Later. Because you never know how the people change in the future. Maybe, you know, there is nothing as good or bad in whatever we do. And maybe in the future, you know, the whole scenario would change. Maybe they would love, maybe people would love to go under the ground, you know. It's uh, sustainable. It's warm. Mm. It's safe. A lot of but wars on the ground. No, I don't think so. <laughs> don't watch a lot Ho of movies. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully not. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not. Uh, so you don't. Uh, uh. So but, uh, basically, to just to answer it in a few uh, sentences, whatever I am doing, I want to be remembered as a good person and never, you know, on the bad side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you um, because uh, you know in my country, in our country, we have uh, Zaha Hadid as a role model. Yes. And as a female uh, architect. Yeah. And um, I met a lot of people feel like, uh, especially girls, they feel that study like um, architecture, feel a kind of pressure from the society that, oh, you should be the next uh, Hadid, you should be the... Yeah. How would you experience this? Um, well, I have never had someone who told me like, <laughs> <"This> is... <laughs> or maybe, good. I don't know. Um, but there is the... I mean... Um, as a role model, as Zaha Hadid, you definitely feel the pressure. Of course. Uh, that you want to do something good. Yeah. Or uh, something re remarkable as yeah, yeah. Uh, she did. Mm. Um, and especially for, you know, a girl from Iraq who now happened to live in the Netherlands and to be also Dutch. And, you know, it's a lot of responsibility. Yeah. Um, and although I have, I have come from quite well-educated family and academic family, and I feel sometimes, you know, not maybe not pressure from my own family, yeah. but, you know, from this, 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 this surrounding that you need to be good as Zaha, you need to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's okay. Um, and I think, um, I really admire Zaha Hadid. Um, but, I don't think I am her. And that's mm. something that I think young uh, female architects and architectural designers should also keep in mind that you know, it's okay to have a role model. And I really admire her work so, so much, mm. but I am not her for yeah. sure. And I, I don't think we should be her because she no. is her and, you know. You, you are you. <laughs> exactly. I, I think also um, like uh, there is no point of being <laughs> a, a copy of somebody else. Like the, no. let's say Zaha did, uh, she had 
her own journey and she did great. And yes. I, I think you, me, everyone else should be like a hero of their own history, uh, story, you know? Yeah. And be bring something new to this planet. Yeah, so this. it's okay. You know, it's okay to have a role model. So okay to admire a person. To get inspiration, uh, to of course. To get inspiration, yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah, but yeah. just don't copy uh, a person, personality or story because then you would lose your own story. Yeah, you would, you're not the original. Up, no, you, it will turn up in a failure for sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I... So in, in my case, Yazad is definitely a role model yeah. for a lot of Iraqi girls, not, not mm. only me. Um, and I really I like her work and admire it. Um, but I'm definitely not her. Yeah. Well. So um, back to the, the question I asked you about what how you want people to remember you. Yeah. Because now like, uh, rest in peace, Ahadid, you know, she's a role model. We are talking about her. And that's how we remember her. Like she's a great architect. Definitely, uh, we all remember her for the the most, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know the shapes and the bold architecture that the, she has put on the ground, mm -hmm. for sure. So, um, if I want to, in that sense, if you ask the question again of how I want to be remembered, remembered yeah, then I would like to be remembered for someone who have put an architectural experience and under the ground. <laughs> no, no, definitely. No, just no. <laughs> but just an, to someone who yeah. uh, can make you yeah. feel on a specific feeling yeah. in a specific place. Mm. Yeah. Whether it's above the ground, under the ground, and on the moon. That's okay. Oh, you're going. <laughs> No, under the <laughs> ground, on the moon. No, on the moon, under the ground. <laughs> <laughs> that's also, Take it to the next level of... That's, uh, <laughs> that's also possible. Yeah. We, we still need to do our research about the ground. Yes. The, uh, moon. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. uh, now name something you did and you're very proud of in your career and something you did and you regret doing it. Okay, so... Hopefully the podcast um, is not the one you regret doing. <laughs> no, why? Oh my God, no, definitely. No, no, no. Oh my God. But, uh, Mustafa, you are trying to put me in trouble. Um, well, so something, uh, there are two things I'm proud of. One of uh, is quite academic and the other one is like from real time practice. Yeah. Um, so I'm really proud that I, during my uh, studies at U Delft, I have also managed to do a history thesis. And I centered it about um, the urban architectural uh, planning of the capital city in uh, the Mesopotamian era. Wow. So we are talking about, you know, um, Uruk, uh, uh, Ashur, um, and uh, Ur, the, all these cities, the capital cities in different eras. And I have done an, an, uh, an research where I, where I compare how these cities have came to and stand and what i have learned from that is like you know even though uh, that is like really ancient but there yeah. is a, there's so much innovation and a respect to the nature and the surrounding that mm. they have incorporate uh, into the design of the city and to the architecture and i and i really i'm really proud of that i have I done i love that. it this should be a podcast also <laughs> maybe next time <laughs> yeah, yeah well let's do it next, next time next visit yeah uh, sure uh so in that sense i'm really proud i have done that and Amazing. Um, so then the next thing is a project that I worked on during my internship at Rheinbaus and also my work experience. Uh, it's called The Knock and it's a uh, transformation of uh, a uh, monumental building that, uh, or part of it is, is monumental, um, to put a uh, level up, so a crown, let's say. And uh, what I found like really interesting in that um, project that it kept it kept coming back to me, you know. <laughs> um, so I would do one drawing, and then it would go and would be discussed by the municipality, and, and it would come back in three years. <laughs> so I remember like delivering the last drawing just a couple of months before I uh, started my master, so before I left Rainbow. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm really happy that it's turned out and built. Uh, in the city so nice. um yeah you can see you can visit it uh or you see it if i'm i'm not sure if you can visit it from mm -hmm. the inside but definitely to uh, admire it from the outside uh, it's on the prince hendrik uh 48 and that's uh the beautiful crown on top so nice yeah yeah, yeah. I, I really like it yeah so eventually like you know this it's what I, what it has also have taught me is that you know sometimes the process is difficult and going back and forth and you know um, but maybe in the end that also leads to something really nice and beautiful. Mm. And that's uh, that was the case for uh, the knock. Yeah. And if you want to um, 
try a new profession to work with, what will you choose mm. to try? Oh, wait, you forgot one question. The, the, yeah. the regretting? The regretting. I think I regret not doing part of my study outside of the Netherlands. Uh, like doing Erasmus or something? Yeah. Okay. Like if you have, I, 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 did, I didn't ever mm. consider it. And I think now, like looking back at it, yeah. I, I kind of regret it. Um, I think you have an experience of that. And, you know, um, so yeah, maybe if I have the chance to do it back again, I will definitely do so. So if you are listening to us like architecture student and you have the opportunity to do an, an you know, a major or minor outside uh, your country yeah. or your environment, definitely do it. Yeah. It's really worth it. I, I repeat this a lot, uh, like to to our listener, like especially mm -hmm. students or stu uh, studying, like go abroad, no matter like what you're studying, you have to go abroad because this yeah. will change your life and take it from me now. Like I, I also, al always repeat this. Yeah. Uh, so if you're listening now and you can apply for the next semester, go abroad and enjoy life. If you have the chance to go abroad, which city or university would would you like to go? Oh, um, I think I would go to Copenhagen again. Why um, not Stockholm? Or Stockholm. <laughs> no, just kidding. Now, okay, Copenhagen. It's because, uh, because of the city and architecture. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, definitely. So, um, well, I was lucky that um, during the bachelor and the master, we have the chance to travel and see other cities. Yeah. It was also part of our studies. Like site visits. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we would go for um, for a week or so, mm. sometimes two weeks. Uh, to just visit and study one location. And I think in that sense, I had, you know, the privilege of doing that. Of course, the uh, the era of COVID didn't help a lot mm, in the mm. first year uh, because otherwise I would be in Monaco. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> but yeah, well, I didn't city. visit it, unfortunately, but I had uh, definitely the pleasure to visit Trieste two times uh, during my yeah, master. Which is cool. um, and also like visiting Berlin and studying it for uh, ah, during ah. my bachelor's in Copenhagen as well. Oh, cool. So in that sense, mm. Malmo, Malmo was so also yeah, yeah. on the yeah. visit. So nice, yeah, nice. Um, definitely do that. Even if, yeah. and if you don't have the chance to go on abroad, just go and study and yeah. another city. And if you are in Iraq and you don't have a lot of traveling possibilities, try to go to another province. You know, the, uh, I'm sh quite sure the architecture is different from yeah. one city to another, and the culture would also differ in some parts. So definitely do that. Yeah, if exactly. You have the chance. I, it's I I love what you mentioned now. Like if you don't have the chance to travel, because not all students have the chance. Uh, so travel within like different regions in your country and then you will see the beauty of like we are different and different styles and Definitely, yeah. and you will collect uh, knowledge. Um, um, yeah, so let's go back to your question about the uh, what would I do? Profession. Yeah, I would definitely study something with cosmology and physics, astro astronomical yeah, things yeah. for sure. And uh, I, I loved your question of uh, what would you be if you be... It's coming, it's yeah. coming, yeah. So, but yeah, but tell me, like... Um, why? You, you mentioned uh, your parents, like, from uh, academia. Mm -hmm. is the, are they working related to physics and astronomy well, or Well, my grandfather uh, ah. is a physician. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah, I'm, like, I really like physics. Yeah. Uh, I grew up with it. And, uh, I'm the, yeah, so it also was built, like, from... Uh, personal interest yeah. in uh, what my grandfather used to do. I remember uh, when I was like really, just before I entering the primary school, um, I would go with my uncle to pick him up from Baghdad <laughs> University, thinking that one day yeah, I yeah. would, you know, <laughs> study here. But unfortunately, yeah, never yeah. had the chance, maybe in the future. Would you love to uh, go back and be like, a, let's say, a professor in academia in uh, Baghdad University teaching like architecture? Um, I th I definitely see teaching uh, as being a part from my profession in the future, for mm, sure. Mm, mm. Um, I think also an, an, an good architect should also give his knowledge to other people. Share, yeah. So share it, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, maybe in the future. Why not? Or maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe also, could, yeah, who knows. Yeah. Um, but but you, I you really have, admire have, it. Yeah, yeah. I really admire it. Yeah. For sure. For the, yeah, for that reason, I think, and I, since we are, you know, I was uh, like really good in math and physics and uh, I really loved it. I love the challenge mm. that I see every time I see, you know, a uh, mathematical problem yeah. or physics. And um, 
for the cosmology is I think yeah, my interest and curiosity in knowing beyond of what we see is like really driving me. With cosmology is like something about the stars and planets? Yeah, yeah. so uh, the physics of, uh, you know, the black holes ah, and the big bang. Cool. I really like that. Yeah, I really like that. complicated. Complicated. <laughs> um, so if you're wondering what I do in my free time, like if I'm really tired and <laughs> don't have any energy left to do any hobby, I would probably yeah. be watching something about yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, for sure. What's the name of the guy, uh, the physician? I forgot him. Stephen Hawking? S- uh, Stephen, uh, no, there is one like living now. He's very cool uh, from the US as well, talking always about the astronomy, the stars, and so on. I follow him on TikTok. I forgot his name. I I don't have a TikTok. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. I'm... <laughs> but I, and I don't, there are a lot. Yeah. No, there is one funny, funny one. Anyway. Oh, yeah. 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 Probably would be. Yeah. Does he have a YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah. He's very, very famous. Is it the long guy? Is no. that what you mean? No, no, another one. Oh, I don't know. We anyway. will share, it. We should, we will yeah, share will, the details will, yeah. later. The thing is that maybe I don't remember his name because, like, I, I hate physics. Really? I hate because oh. I had To be honest, like, I still have these feelings or, like, I don't have so much knowledge because during my education period, like, the, our teacher was not really, like, super clear and couldn't yeah. um, present physics to me as a kid in a good yeah. way. So I still mm-hmm. have this, like, I didn't like physics because of these years and yeah. I, until now like i'm not so really interested in in this so yeah. <laughs> no i can i can imagine so in, in my case i think i had the privilege of uh you know even though i didn't care if the tutor <laughs> was good or or bad yeah, since i yeah. have a, and you know a doctor at home. home yeah yeah uh, so i still like even though that um we have separated in different countries i did, like when i used to be in the secondary school and I had the question even in the uh, uh, you know when we had mechanics and everything in, mm. in the university yeah. I would still call my grandfather so cool. uh, if I don't understand the so thing cool. uh, my grandmother she was a uh, mathematics uh, teacher Wow. Uh, so yeah that's cool. why uh, yeah, my, my yeah, mother yeah. was always concerned that I would do not finish my stuff because I was like you know doing baking some cake <laughs> with my grandmother while you know yeah. We would uh, solve a mathematical yeah, yeah. problem, and my mother would think, "You need to study now." <laughs> <laughs> and I remember, like my grandmother, always she was always like, "No, she knows the subject. Uh, she is good. <laughs> you don't need to worry." Nice, nice. Um, yeah, my father is a contractor, and I think I have like from a really young age uh, this connection with buildings yeah. and uh, materials and everything. So I have, you know, yeah. th- there is some kind of background, yeah. but also this really. Um, huge sense for our architecture and art mm. um so my uh great grandparents are um people who made jewelries and uh mm. you know yeah and uh, they all like also like now looking at my uh family members uh, that had nothing to do with architecture they all can paint really quite well and mm. you know do it by yeah. N- nature like it's uh, yeah. uh, it's in there you just need to discover exactly. it somehow. No, I'm I'm happy that uh, all these uh, reasons uh, mm-hmm. turned that you study architecture and you like it and you're passionate about it. Because sometimes, like even if we have family with specific professions, uh, they will of course influence us. And sometimes we study what what we get as a background and we don't like mm-hmm. it. Sometimes we. Yeah. We really succeed in it yeah. and love it. And I'm really happy that you're yeah. like very passionate about it. Well, this. when I was like in the younger age, I think there was also like, uh, you know, they, they were they were all thought that I would some do something with medicine or something. Oh, okay. Like, a like or yeah. something. business as usual. Yeah, since, since, yeah, exactly. Since I was like really good in uh, biology and, mm. um, you know, chemistry and all of that. And um, till, you know, I, ha- I have always had, you know, some hesitation in my mind, like maybe I'm good in that. But the thing is, I get quite touched with other people, feelings mm. and such. And I th- don't think as, you know, someone who works directly with people should have such an. Mm. And so, yeah, the thing is, and I couldn't, you know, release my creativity. Yeah in that so, yeah, way so yeah. i needed also like i love to you know math and physics mm-hmm. and shapes and geometry and all of that and i also have you know this passion for art so 
Makes architecture sense. was, you know, the path to combine yeah. these both together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So about the question that if you, um, I, I am interested to hear your answer. If you want to choose to be something else than being a human, what will you choose and why? Oh my God, I would be, I would give you a full scenario. I would choose <laughs> to be any type of particle that enters a black hole. Uh, that's complicated. <laughs> Uh, I told you I don't like physics. No, the thing is, um, <laughs> I'm really... So I tell, like, wait, wait. Okay. You need to tell me this again in slow motion so okay. I understand because I'm not that smart. Tell me. I can be any type of particle. So uh, a photon, a gamma ray, anything that can enter, or maybe a person. Anything can enter the black hole. Yeah? Yeah. I want to see what is beyond <laughs> <laughs> so, okay okay so i know that you know there is a lot of theories about mm. you know the black holes might be uh, you know a loop that end up in another place where you have an opening wow. or you have this singularity uh theory where uh, they think that each particle of the human body will lay then if the if, if a human would enter you know a black hole yeah. each cell and each particle would lay in uh, in a singular row and uh, that would be a painful death but anyway <laughs> I really, oh I am God. so curious about knowing the unknown. I'm so curious mm. about, you know, researching further. And the thing is, what I also like about architecture is, uh, you, you know, you can incorporate, there is political um, issues in yeah. it. There is uh, scientific issues in yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. You know? And there are a lot of layers. A layer, exactly. Mm. And you also work with different type mm. of things. And that's why I think, yeah. But for me, for sure, I still need to, I hope I would live long enough to see what is beyond. Ah. You know? That, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think they will uh, figure out? Well, I think... 50 um, years from now? Maybe. Let's say. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe we would watch like in, in the near future and, and star would go inside and, uh, you know, and black hole and yeah. see what would happen around it. Mm. But yeah, I'm... Um, I mean, hey, NASA, if you listening to this, Take me. if you want to send someone to the black hole, I'm yeah. here. <laughs> so what is your uh, opinion about, um, let's say, Jeff Bezos and all other people that, um, uh, I think even uh, Elon Musk, they like what, building cities on Mars and so on. What do you think about this approach? Uh, well, I, I mean, um, it's, um, what, do you, what do you call home? Is only the earth your home? Is only the country is mm. your home? Or you are looking at the whole universe and call it a home? Um, I think why not? Why? I mean, there is a lot of opportunities. And I think um, if you look from an architectural point of view, there would be definitely uh, a different type of architecture built on Mars yeah, and the yeah. moon. And, and maybe it all uh, will stay something, you know, in uh, in our imagination. Maybe it's something that won't happen. And, uh, mm. But yeah, I'm, I mean, hey, why not? Yeah. If if you can imagine to build something or to make something, mm. why not trying? I think it's worthy. So don't take your, uh, you know, dreams uh, for granted. If mm. you are if you are capable to dream about something or wanting something, yeah, I think you can have the ability to to do it so cool. in that sense do it mm -hmm. let's see let's, let's see. see yeah yeah show us yeah <laughs> so now we are in the in the last section of this episode and it's yeah. about messages so first question is about you giving a message to yourself oh my god don't worry too much <laughs> <laughs> is it a message or is it a message to me uh, or to yourself <laughs> it's, a, it's a message for myself i feel like um just enjoy every step. Uh, be patient. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's also the advice that my mother always give me. Be mm. patient. So mm. be patient. But enjoy. you don't listen. <laughs> no, I listen. That's why I did architecture. She's giving, she's giving you every time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, the thing is, you know, um, I was hesitating choosing architecture or not. And I needed someone to say, hey, this might suit you. Yeah. And my mother, she was like, Listen, you are creative, you are good in math, mm. you are good in physics, you can do this. And you also need to learn how to be patient. And I think this study <laughs> can show you how to be patient. And so I was like, good. okay. So good. And I remember after I, uh, you know, just before my presentation, uh, my graduation presentation mm. from the master's, 
I was like, is this patient enough, mom? And she was like, definitely. Uh, finally. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm patient yeah. enough. But definitely, I mean, um, yeah, just to keep, keep patient yeah. and uh, to enjoy every moment uh, of this step. Sometimes, you know, setbacks are not really setbacks, but just, you know, uh, taking the arrow back to it to, yeah. to move again. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, cool. enjoy every second. Um, yeah. What the your next question? My question, <laughs> the next one is about you giving three takeaway messages to our listeners. Okay, be courageous. Uh, dare to do things. Jump, jump into it. Or at least this is how I do. I really mm. jump into things. If I want to talk to someone like Mustafa, I just do. Um, if I want to do a project, I just do. If I want to publish um, an idea or not, just do it. Just, mm. you know, there is nothing bad in trying. So do that. And uh, take this into, um, if you are an architectural student or, an, you know, some designer as me, um, don't be afraid, you know. Sometimes we are afraid of sharing our ideas just because we are afraid of judgment. Mm. Um, so I think, you know, when you get out of your comfort zone and, you know, it's okay to be judged sometimes by people, just, you know, yeah. to know where you stand. So um, in that case, be courageous and um, think about what you are leaving in the memory of other people. Mm. So, you know, you are definitely, each one of us have the power to leave something in the individual memory of yeah. people. So think about it twice because you are definitely changing their perspective towards mm. the world mm. and towards the next action. So if you are a designer, think about that. If you are a doctor, think about that. Um, if you are still a student, also think about that. I think each one of us have the power to change yeah. and to influence other people's uh, lives. And um, my last message, and this, this is specific for architecture students and maybe also female architects. Um, architecture doesn't need to be complicated. Um, you know, sometimes uh, an architectural solution is by a simple detail. Mm. You don't need always to put a lot of effort and to push it further sometimes it sketches says more than an under render mm. so don't uh, don't underestimate you know your power mm. and uh, sometimes simplicity is really and an key and to how to master it is definitely something so in that case <laughs> i have i have wrote down <laughs> yeah know, really good if, really yeah. good and uh, yeah so in that case yeah. these are my three messages to uh, our listeners. listeners. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Great. And now uh, the last question in this episode is about you asking it to our listeners. So what is your question? And this will be the last question in this episode. Okay. So um, the last question is to you guys. How did you, um, how did you feel about talking about this uh, individual and collective memory? Mm -hmm. Can you recall it in your environment? Can you say... This belongs to a collective memory. This is something that I have not experienced myself. Um, and how did I affect it then, or affected your individual and collective memory through this episode? Can you recall something that you probably didn't experience, but you have an opinion on, or um, you have, you can you recall something from it? Uh, just think about that. Tell us then. Uh, I think in the questions, if you. We can, uh, we can they yeah. can answer or they can like Just, uh, um, reach out to you on LinkedIn. Definitely, you can uh, always reach out on LinkedIn yeah. and uh, I would be very happy and glad to uh, to discuss it with you. So Nice. Yeah, thank you so, so much. So, uh, thank you so much for um, for coming, for sharing your story with us and I'm really happy to meet you, to talk to you and um, looking forward to record one more episode about your previous thesis as well. So, but yeah. thanks for coming. Thank you so much, Mustafa. It uh, has been really a pleasure to meet you and also to do this episode. So uh, it's a success. It's not a regret. <laughs> uh, <laughs> definitely, for sure. Um, and thank you to all the, the listeners who uh, have been uh, listening to our podcast. And uh, please feel free to reach out to Mustafa or me if you have uh, any questions. And uh, I really, really be glad to answer them. Thank you so much.